He hangs up the phone. And he's like, hey, Fox News correspondent Benjamin Hall has been catastrophically wounded. He's got a wife and two little girls at home. Uh, the U.S. military is not going to go get him. The agency is not going to go get him. Uh, if, if we don't go get him right now, he's going to die. When the U.S. government can't do, can't or won't do something, they could use surrogates. A surrogate would be someone outside the government, meaning not paid, so there's no attribution to the U.S. government, and they could do it. And, and there's patriots all around the world that, that do use their companies, use their other things. The nonprofit world, uh, if you think of government, government organizations, right, the government institutions, and then you have NGOs. So I'm not telling you anything that's a secret here. Mm -hmm. Government organizations, NGOs, not government organizations, not profits, uh, do things outside the government. The government could at any time request an NGO to do something as a surrogate for them. And it happens all the time, uh, especially the intelligence agencies do it all the time. And so uh, as we're there, you have relationships and, and friendships and people know you. And so as we're there setting up, um, we had got a request from a uh, special operations liaison officer of, you know, uh, the Central Intelligence Agency to, uh, to go get Benjamin Hall. At the same time, simultaneously, we had a call from the Pentagon uh, from Fox News correspondent uh, because Benjamin Hall worked for Fox News. And, uh, and that request was to go get Benjamin Hall. For those that don't know, uh, Benjamin Hall is Fox News correspondent. He was in Kiev at the time of the heavy, heavy attack. Uh, and so when he, when Kiev was, was under a heavy attack, his vehicle got hit, uh, whether it's intentional or not, his vehicle got hit and, uh, the two Ukrainians in a vehicle with him were di disintegrated. Uh, his combat correspondent, Sasha lost everything. The only thing remaining of her was her arm. Uh, Pierre, uh, his 25 year old, 25 year Fox court cameraman, amazing guy, covered a lot in Afghanistan. Just want to. Uh, everybody talks about him, talks about an incredible human being. He was killed instantly, and Benjamin Hall uh, was catastrophically wounded. Um, lost his, lost a foot, lost a leg. Should, should have kept his hand, but it's pretty bad. Lost an eye. Uh, they didn't think he was going to make it. Brain, traumatic brain injury. He was blown up really bad. A Ukrainian troops saw him. They took him to, the, to a, a military hospital. And uh, so the, the call was, and I remember, I remember we were in the living room. There was nine of us in the living room, and and the sea sprays on the phone, and we see him start to write like, hey, "Everybody, be quiet! Something serious is going on." You know, everybody knows right away. Like everyone's laughing, he's goofing off, but something serious is going on. And uh, sea spray starts writing stuff down. He hangs up the phone. And he's like, "Hey, Fox News correspondent Benjamin Hall has been catastrophically wounded. He's got a wife and two little girls at home. Uh, the U.S. military is not going to go get him. The agency is not going to go get him." Uh, if if we don't go get him right now, he's going to die. Uh, who's in? Nine people in that room. Uh, eight former military guys. One professional baseball player just happened to be in the room at the time. Adam LaRouche. And uh, everybody's like, let's go get him. Not, not one person hesitated, including my son. Let's go get him. And, uh, you know... I always talk about these things being miracles, uh, but you can't argue when God does something to set something up. An hour before that phone call, we had just got two ambulances, yellow EMT vest, badges made, and paperwork to make us look like EMTs because we knew that was the only way to pass through checkpoints at night, an hour before that call. If we wouldn't have had those assets in place, we were building those assets in place to be able to have access, you know, access and placement. If we didn't have those assets in place at that time of that call, we wouldn't have been able to do it. An hour before that call, Dakota Myers uh, was there. Um, um, Raddick, Dr. Raddick, like all these guys, like the right, we had Dr. Raddick who's a surgeon, a trauma surgeon who ran a, ran, ran a, uh, I think he was at J Mao unit. Like, like all the, all these, everybody, everything was in the right place to be able to pull a trigger and just say, Grab your bags, let's go. And, and I believe God orchestrated that. We within about thirty minutes, we got in the, got in the vehicles and loading up. And as we we're loading up, I seen Hunter throw his bag in the back of that ambulance to go. And uh, and C Spray looks at me and goes, "Is Hunter coming?" And I'm like, yeah, "If you if you say he's coming, I'm not gonna make that decision. If you say he's coming, he's coming. I was gonna relinquish that." And C Spray said, "Man, I need somebody to run the talk. Sean's gonna stay back and run the talk." The solo from the Jason, this the solo guy uh, is going to come sit in the talk, but I need I need Hunter here, 
because he knows how this stuff works. And I'm like, if I tell him, he's going to think I'm holding him back. He's like, I'll tell him. And, uh, and so Siege Bray told him he had to stay back. And I could tell he was just like, hey, I'm, I'm, he said, you know, where you need me, that's where I'm going to be. But he wanted to come. And, uh, and you know, it tore my heart out to, to see him. I know he wanted to be there. And we, we drove, we got in the vehicles, we drove across uh, the a, a vehicle, B A vehicle. C Spray was leading one vehicle, I was leading another. Uh, me, Adam, and Dakota was one. We we stopped outside the city uh, as a as a kind of backup element, QRF backup element. C Spray and then went in the city, grabbed Benjamin Hall. I can't say exactly how it all happened uh, because uh, there's some things that I don't think I'm. I think I'd probably get in trouble for saying, but uh, but got him got him in the vehicle and got him eventually. I mean, he, he was, his feet were gone. He's shrapnel all through his throat. Damn. Um, his brains, they have a tube in his brain. Uh, his hands blown off, uh, not blown off, bone pretty bad. And, uh, and, and he's like Dr. Addicts, like he's, he's, he has to, we have to move him. And, uh, we, uh, we, we knew we knew in that moment like if if we didn't get, if we didn't move him then like he was he was he was going to die, uh, and 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 she sprayed him had to had to move him out of the hospital and the and the hospital was, like hey we can only release him so they they like, just stole him, <laughs> just stole him out of the hospital because <laughs> they were like arguing are you guys doctors who are you guys and we're just like, they just took him out, and uh, and uh, and so, got him across the border and and when we got him across the border the eighty second airborne was waiting and they and a helicopter. Uh, sea spray and 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 Bo uh, loaded him on the helicopter, and and then flew him to uh, Aero Medical C one thirty. Got him on an Aero Medical C one thirty and flew him to Launch Dual Germany, and eventually to uh, to Brook Army Medical Center in, in Texas, where he where he recovered. The next day, uh, we were asked to go get the body of Pierre, and uh, and I was like, I'll make the call. Like, no, we're not gonna go get a body. Uh, Kiev still like getting rocketed us under a heavy attack. The Russia Russia's trying to they have circled the city. They were trying to close in on it. We're not gonna go and 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 uh, I mean we've been to other cities since then, but we're not we're not gonna go in well, just for a body. Yeah. And then his wife Michelle showed up and was like, I want my son, I want my husband. And we were like, Yes, ma'am. And uh, and we went in and I actually drove I I actually drove uh, Pierre's body out in a, in, a, in a hearse. He was in a hearse and the guy was trying to use the hearse to get out of. He's like, hey, like, uh, I, I need to drive him out. It's my hearse, and I'm like, hey, uh, you, uh, we're gonna we're gonna buy your hearse from you. And he's like, uh, no, I'm not selling my hearse. And I'm like, yeah, you don't understand either. You're selling your hearse. To, <laughs> we're gonna steal your hearse. We're we're taking this. We didn't want to remove that casket from the uh, from the hearse. And uh, and and uh, I put him on. I'm like, hey, get on the phone, Fox News, make the deal of your life. They're gonna pay you for whatever you want for this car. And they were transferring you money, and uh, and we got that hearse. But I remember like going in the back, and we had to open it and verify it was his body. And uh, and at this moment, they had a uh, he's he's from Ireland, and they had an Irish flag, and they had they had really set him up like dignified, but they had an Irish flag in the back. And uh, and I remember like it made me realize like our guys right when they come home, and how on the casket we put the blue at the head, and the stripes go down to the feet. And so I quickly googled like how's the Irish flag go. You know, green. It's a green orange of the head, and and uh, and, uh, and so I looked it up on Google real quick, and I, and I started putting it over, and I actually got like really frantic, and and uh, and I was trying to tape it on, and C Spray came back and he grabbed my hand. He's like, "You're right, brother." And I'm like, "Yeah, I just want to do this right, man." We were taking him to his wife, and we uh, and we we took he took, took our time. We put it put it put the flag on, and we drove. I drove the hearse, and C Spray never in front of me, an ambulance, and we. Got him across the border, border, and and uh, delivered him to his wife, we, and uh, and you know in a dignified way, and uh, you know since then we've gotten some other bodies, uh, Dan Swift, the Navy SEAL, who um, his mother reached out, and the U.S. State Department were told told her terrible, terrible, treated it terribly, treated her terribly, uh, some conflict with his service, and it's like who cares? He's a Navy SEAL that is there trying to help people. We're gonna we're gonna get him out and get him home to his mom and his, and his kids. And so we got his body out. And then, um, you know, we've gotten to do so many amazing things and our team's been all over. I mean, um, but through that, through that process, I was, I was I kind of fast forward into this. There was a moment uh, where things progressed and Hunter eventually got to come across the border into Ukraine. He and I went and I was like, it's a pretty safe kind of trip. And I took him, just me and him. 
and uh, and I watched him, his composure. I watched how he handled it. And I'm like, you know what? God's God's doesn't just call me to do these things. Like He's calls other people too, including Hunter. And if God has a has a calling on Hunter's heart to do these things, who am I to keep him from doing these things? Right? Uh, I don't want to spend my whole life keeping him from doing the things that God's called him to do. I wouldn't want anybody doing that to me. And so I had to relinquish it. I had to go back to the promise in 2018 to realize God loves him more than I can. God can protect him better than I can. And, and God has a call in his life too. And, and I made the decision to relinquish that as hard as it was as a dad to do that and, and, and let him kind of run. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.